Uh, and in this case, I want to look at the copy sop. The copy sop, you know, if you start with sops, the copy sop is one that you, uh, it's not hard to fall in love with this particular operator because it does so many gorgeous, gorgeous things. So I'm going to start with a circle here. I'm going to go ahead in this case, right from the beginning, I'm going to attach a null. I'm going to move that all the way over here, over to the right hand side. And remember, we talked about part of the reason that we use nulls uh, is it allows us to set attributes or um, select them or do any number of things with nulls in our networks and still work upstream, right? Because as I work upstream of this, I'm not going to have to keep doing what I just did where I was constantly kind of flipping flags on and off, toggle this, toggle that, toggle this, toggle that, blah, blah, blah. Instead, I can just rely on this null is the thing that's going to display, and I'm going to work upstream of that thing. That gives me a way to work really smartly, right? I can work in a much more clever way without having to do a bunch of additional work, uh, which, you know, as much as we can remove the additional kind of headache of uh, clicks and uh, scripts and you name it that um, reduce the amount of time they're actually working um, and, you know, kind of working with the interface instead, um, the more we can kind of focus on streamlining our work, the happier we're going to be in the long run. Okay, so we've got our circle, uh, and that's great, Matt, but tell me about how that works. So I'm actually going to add a rectangle next. So I'm going to drop this rectangle in here. I'm going to add a copy sop into here, and, oops, not a convert, a copy. I'm going to plug my circle into my copy. I'm going to plug my copy back into my null, right? And next, what I'm going to do is uh, I need to make, oh, no, actually, that's just fine. What we're going to do is we're going to plug this rectangle. Well, before we do too much crazy stuff, we're going to switch that to being uh, here on this kind of ZX plane instead. Right, so it's on the ground, or the, you know, quote unquote ground, however we kind of want to imagine that. And we're going to plug that into our second input. Now, it's kind of hard to understand what just happened here precisely. Uh, that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of particular sense at the moment, but maybe a little bit. So uh, let's, you know, let's keep working with this to see what we end up with, uh, because hopefully what we'll kind of arrive at as we manipulate this a little bit is going to make more sense. Um, I'm going to flip off this rotate to normal, and I'm going to do that so they all kind of show up here just flat for a second. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my rectangle, and I'm just going to crank up the size on this a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. That's going to help us see a little bit better what's going on. And I'm just going to make that 5 by 5 I'm going to use the H key to home here. And now we can see, if we come back to this rectangle, let's make it viewer active. I'm going to hit the H key to home, rotate here. I'm going to right click to bring up some display options. I'm going to uh, pick display options from that kind of contextual menu. And now what I want to do, right, is I'm going to just hover over these things, and what I want to display are points. I'm going to hit the W key to turn it on the wireframe here, and I can see I've got these little blue dots that represent the points of this particular piece of geometry, this particular surface operator. So what I ended up with in my copy sop by employing the second input, which is, if you hover over it, we can see this is the template, is I ended up with one of my inputs, right, so one of my data, right, that connects to the data input here. So I get a circle at every single one of these points, every single point on my data, on my, excuse me, on my template. So you might rightly think, well, you could plug a circle in there, and you certainly could. Nothing too exciting looks like it's happened. But if we hit the W key, we can see that we've got this kind of spiral graph kind of effect that's happening. Right, this is a slick way to do all sorts of really fun things. And uh, it's r easy to fall into all sorts of kind of rabbit holes playing with this particular operator. And, and 
as much as I uh, want to do that all the time, I'm, I'm going to refrain uh, at the moment from doing that. Okay. Well, what else do we want to do with this copy sound? Uh, well, first I'm going to turn off that little pop-up there to save our brains a little bit. And I'm going to keep my network organized. The next thing I'm going to do is I actually want 10 copies. That's, you know, again, <sighs> Matt, you're making me crazy. Like, you tell me to do these things, but then I don't see anything happen, and it's so frustrating, and that's all right. That's all right. You know, we're, we're, we're learning a lot of what's going on right now. We're navigating our way through this experience, so it's okay to feel a little bit kind of at sea at the moment. So we've got 10 copies, but currently what's happening is all 10 of those are in the same plane. They haven't moved at all. So what I want to do is I want to use this translate parameter, and I'm going to change this to not 0.5. So now every copy, right, is translated up uh, just half a unit. So up half a unit, we get a circle. Up another half a unit, we get another circle. Up another half a unit, we get another circle. And this happens 10 times. Well, that's great. But what if I did something like change the scale to not 0.75? So now... I go up half a unit, I go down 75%. And then I go up half a unit, and I go down to 75% of the previous size. Right, so I've got this kind of recursive situation that's happening here. I get this kind of like shrinky, tunnely, funnily situation that's really fun. Uh, and that's that's pretty all right. That's, I like the look of that at the moment. Um, that's, that's doing something for me. I feel like we're cooking with gas a little bit. Um, and you know what that's, that, what it makes me think about is that we should actually go back and it makes me wonder if we could use one of these other operators we've already played with. So I'm gonna insert a skin sop, right? I wanna skin this a little bit. Whoa. And now I've got some kind of weird psychedelic landscape and I don't I don't know what's going on there exactly and that's that's great I like that a lot what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on this output polygons there at the bottom uh, I don't want to skin all of my primitives I want to skin groups of n primitives so every two primitives I want to draw a skin on that and so now what we're gonna end up with is our bottom one right so one two Let's skin that thing that we're going to skip. This one, this one, let's skin that. Let's skip, right? So now we've got this kind of like tubal, interesting structure that's, that's starting to look interesting, right? That's still pretty flat, though. So why don't we use the same technique we just learned? Let's drop an attribute create here in line. Let's compute some normals. And now we've got something that's got some kind of shading to it. Okay, now we're making progress. We could do something kind of fun with this, right? It wouldn't be hard to think about all sorts of exciting things that we could start to do here. Okay, let's click off that one, and let's keep on making.